Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is John Thompson. I'm with the communications branch of Yukon's Department of Energy, Mines and Resources. Thank you for joining us. This is another technical briefing on the heap leach failure that occurred at the Eagle Mine, Eagle Gold Mine on June the 24th. Our aim is to give you an update on what's new since our last briefing. As we've said before, we appreciate that many people have questions and concerns about the situation. We don't have all the answers at this point, but we're here to share what we do know. We're still working out the best approach to provide updates to the public. We will be publishing a recording of this briefing on Facebook. At some point, we won't have enough of an update to warrant holding a full news conference. We're looking at different ways to provide more information online. I'd like to introduce our speakers, some of whom will offer introductory comments before we open the floor to questions. John Stryker is Minister of Energy, Mines and Resources. Lauren Haney is Deputy Minister. Kelly Constable is our Director of Mineral Resources. Seven Bunnett is with our Compliance, Monitoring and Inspections Branch. He's the Manager of Major Mines and Operations North. From Health and Social Services, we have Benton Foster, Director of Community Health Programs. And we have Tyler Williams, a water resources scientist from the Department of Environment. We'll begin with Minister Stryker. Thanks, John. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today on the traditional territory of the Kwanlin Dun First Nation and the Taan Quechan Council for an update on the response to the heap leach failure at the Eagle Gold Mine. Let's start with water. Since our media briefing last week on July 11th, our team and technical experts have been busy reviewing the company's plans for water storage and treatment. The Yukon government and First Nation of Nacho Nayak Dun technical teams have met with technical experts and representatives from Victoria Gold to ensure we have a complete understanding of what the company is doing and planning on the site to address the slide and its impacts. We acknowledge that the company participated fully in these technical discussions. Above all else, our shared goal remains to protect people and the environment. As you were, will recall, last week, inspectors issued direction to Victoria Gold to take immediate measures to increase water storage capacity, manage water flow, stabilize the slide area, expand water monitoring, and develop a comprehensive water treatment plan. Comme vous le savez, la semaine dernière, les inspecteurs ont demandé à Victoria Gold de prendre des mesures immédiates pour augmenter sa capacité de stockage de l'eau, guérir l'écoulement de l'eau, stabiliser la zone de glissement, améliorer le suivi de la qualité de l'eau et élaborer un plan de traitement de l'eau exhaustif. We have received Victoria Gold's responses to these directives and are now working to ensure they refine their plans to address and mitigate our concerns. To strengthen our water monitoring efforts, we have contracted Core Geo, a local environmental consulting company to conduct ongoing daily, both surface and groundwater, water quality monitoring at the mine site. They will also monitor the activities of the company and provide us with daily updates. The plan to hire Core Geo was created with the First Nation of Nachanaik Dun and is the result of collaboration between our technical teams. This is in addition to the water sampling work being done further downstream from the mine site by the Department of Environment and Nachanaik Dun that we spoke about last week. Two weeks ago, we reported the one sample of water in Haggart Creek by the mine taken June 25th that showed cyanide levels above aquatic life guidelines. Subsequent samples from days following have not shown any cyanide or heavy metal concentrations above the aquatic life guidelines or safe drinking water guidelines. In a moment, Tyler Williams, water resources scientist with the Department of Environment will speak in more detail on our water sampling efforts. 
But let me add two more points about water sampling. Two weeks ago when we spoke about the sample of concern in Haggart Creek, we also spoke about the water sample from the bottom of the slide on the mine site that had high levels of cyanide and other contaminants. This is what we expected because the heap leach debris flow has cyanide solution in it. My second point is that this remains our most significant and serious environmental risk. That debris flow is in contact with the ground, which means that the cyanide solution is in contact with groundwater that flows toward Haggart Creek. And this is exactly why the response effort continues to focus on water sampling and water management. We need to contain and treat surface water. We need to contain and treat any contaminated groundwater. And we need to do that on a site where we still have safety risks to navigate. We will need to continue to monitor the water. The information we are getting from groundwater sampling is helping us understand the movement of contaminants in the environment and it helps us to prioritize containment and remediation efforts accordingly. I understand that as we continue to conduct water sampling, we are working towards creating a web page where Yukoners can access this information online at yukon.ca. As I stated a moment ago, following the issuance of inspectors directions last week, the Yukon government has received and reviewed plans from Victoria Gold. Our technical experts continue to review Victoria Gold's responses to our directions. We continue to apply a progressive enforcement approach, which may include issuing additional directions as necessary. In a moment, I'll turn it over to officials to provide more details on this response to date. As more progress is made, and as the Yukon government continues to respond to this catastrophe, we will continue to provide regular public updates about the ongoing response. We are engaging with the First Nation of Nachunaikdan on an ongoing basis. We are sharing information and meeting regularly. We've also provided a briefing, briefing to both opposition parties so that they can better understand the steps government is taking to protect people and the environment. The safety of people and the protection of our environment have guided every decision and action that our government has made since the heap leach failure occurred. It has always been our government's position that a, health, that a healthy environment and a healthy economy need to go hand in hand. It is important that we work together. We need to ensure our government decisions reflect our commitment to the environment, to public safety, and to a sound future for the Yukon. Notre gouvernement a toujours été d'avis qu'un environnement sain et est une économie saine doivent aller de pair. Nous devons travailler ensemble. Nous devons veiller à ce que les décisions du gouvernement reflètent, non, excuse-moi, du gouvernement reflète son engagement envers l'environnement, la sécurité publique est, est un avenir sain pour le Yukon. Since our last briefing, we have heard back from the first nation of Nachunaikdan leadership in response to our request for more information about their call for a moratorium on mining within their traditional territory. I don't speak for the First Nation, but I will share our understanding that following the heap leach failure, the First Nation of Nachunaikdan does not want any new mineral claims, licenses, exploration, development, authorizations, or ongoing mining activities on their traditional territory. We understand that they do wish to see care and maintenance, closure, remediation, and reclamation activities continue. We acknowledge that this is their position and the Yukon government is now working to understand rights and obligations under Canadian and territorial law. We're also looking at the First Nation of Nacho Naikdan's request within the context of the umbrella final agreement as well as current mining legislation, the Yukon Environmental and Socioeconomic Assessment Act, and the mechanics and implications for all Yukoners. The final agreement set out the mutually agreed upon principles and processes of resource development, land use planning, fish and wildlife management, and water management. This is what guides the work of 
of the Yukon government and our actions moving forward in collaboration with our partners. Our government has, and always will be, committed to implementation of the final agreements, and we continue to work with Yukon First Nations to develop modern minerals legislation. As I wrap up my remarks, I want to reiterate our commitment to provide regular updates throughout every phase of this process. We understand Yukoners' concerns about the environment, the safety of animals and waterways, and what this means for our social and economic future. We are concerned too. While our immediate focus is on protecting people and the environment, we're also aware of impacts to workers, businesses, and the economy. I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone involved in this response. Your dedication and professionalism are invaluable as we navigate this incredibly challenging situation. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Next, we'll have some comments from Kelly Constable, Director of Mineral Resources. Thank you. As noted by the Minister, this week our team of technical experts have been busy reviewing the company's plans for water storage and water treatment. Contaminated water is being stored in ponds at the site. In recent days, these ponds have nearly filled up and the company is running out of storage space. As a temporary measure, the company is creating additional storage space by pumping water from the storage ponds through the heap. The company expects to do this for 10 to 15 days while it addresses water treatment and builds additional storage capacity. The intention for this water storage is to hold contaminated water until it can be treated and then released to the environment. Currently, the company's water treatment facility is unable to treat the amounts of contaminants in the water. The company is working to upgrade the facility. The company has increased its monitoring of geotechnical stability of the heap and the slide well it irrigates the heap. Workers are currently not staying overnight as a safety precaution. As a regulator, we are also trying to be flexible to adapt to a quickly changing situation. The company has introduced additional measures to help address water storage at the site in the short term. Our technical experts have been busy reviewing these plans this week. We will be providing more information as it becomes available. Thank you, Kelly. Next, we'll have some comments from Tyler Williams with the Department of Environment. He will be giving us an update on water quality monitoring. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here, and thank you to Minister Stryker for his opening remarks. My name is Tyler Williams, and I'm a water resources scientist with the Department of Environment's Water Resource Branch. I'm here today to provide more information about our water sampling program downstream of the Eagle Gold mine site. On the screen, you will see a map of our water sampling stations, which include both on-site locations at the mine and off-site locations at Dublin Gulch, Eagle Creek, Haggart Creek, and the South McQuestion River. You will see on-site locations marked in red, off-site locations marked in yellow, groundwater locations marked in dark red, and long-term monitoring locations cooperated between the Government of the Yukon and the Government of Canada and monitored in collaboration with the First Nation of Nacho Nayak Dunn, marked in green. Since the heat leach failure, we have worked together with the First Nation of Nacho Nayak Dunn and other Yukon government departments to increase the frequency of our surface water monitoring and to add new sample sites. Last week, I noted we are sampling every second day. I can now provide an update that we are sampling daily at select locations. Water samples downstream of the mine are being tested for various forms of cyanide, metals, and other contaminants. Water sample results are being compared to aquatic life guidelines in federal water quality guidelines and the water quality objectives as part of the mine's license. Water samples are being tested by a lab in BC and we are requesting the analysis to be rushed, which typically means the turnaround within five to seven business days. Water sample results are being shared during these technical briefings as they become available, and we're also working to make this information available online. One thing I want to make clear is these samples are a snapshot in time. The situation is evolving, and we will continue to evolve our sampling approach. 
the more data we can capture, the clearer the picture of what is happening downstream of the site. To date, we have reported the results of samples taken on June 25th and 26th. Our June 25 sample of Hager Creek at our W4M station on the map was reported on July 4. It showed cyanide detected at 0.04 milligrams per liter, which is above the aquatic life guideline of 0.05 milligrams per liter. On June 26 sample, which was taken two kilometers downstream of ha on Hager Creek at our W99 station on the map, did not detect cyanide. We reported this result last week on July 10. Today, we were able to share results of samples taken on July 4 and 5th and July 8th and 10th. July 4th surface water sample results show cyanide concentrations below the aquatic life guidelines, which again, are 0.005 milligrams per liter. Similarly, July 8th and 10th surface water samples also show cyanide levels below aquatic life guidelines. In July 5th and 10th groundwater samples, there was a detectable amount of thiocyanate. Thiocyanate is a stable and less toxic form of cyanide that does not have an aquatic life guideline. No other forms of cyanide were detected in these samples. Again, these sample results provide a snapshot in time and will help inform a broader picture of the situation as more sample results are collected. For example, last week, we conducted sampling on four days between July 8th and 12th, collecting 25 samples. We are awaiting the full set of these results. As water sampling efforts continue, we look forward to working with Corgio, as Minister Stryker mentioned, to support our water sampling program. Our water monitoring efforts are in addition to the work of the Department of Environment's Fish and Wildlife Branch to work with the First Nation of Nachanai Dunn and the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans on a long-term monitoring program of fish populations in the tributaries of the Haggard Creek watershed. This work is underway and includes taking samples of fish tissues to determine heavy metal concentrations and taking fish population counts to determine if there are any measurable changes in population numbers through time due to habitat alterations related to the mine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tyler. We'll now open the floor to questions. This week, we'll give each reporter a chance to ask a question and a follow-up question. We'll begin with reporters in the room. We'll then turn to reporters joining remotely. If you're online, please indicate if you have a question you'd like to ask. We'll begin with Julian with CBC. Um, okay. Yeah, so you're probably all aware of the story that we uh, published yesterday. Uh, some experts with Natronaic Dunn saying, you know, this is a disaster happening uh, in real time. Every minute matters. Uh, Farzad Moham is one of those experts, and he said that uh, storage has run out. He has said as well that uh, there's not enough reagent. And he's also said that pumping capacity at the heat bleach facility is disabled. So it's just a snapshot, I realize, but I'd really like to hear what the government has to say about what other experts are saying from the other side. Uh, because they sort of talk about the gravity of this problem and articulate it in a way that is very easily understood. Uh, so could you please respond to, to what they've, they've highlighted to us, please? Uh, Kelly, please. Thank you. Our experts are working hand in hand with Nacho Nike Dunn's experts. Um, the company maintains control of the site. So our role as a regulator is to monitor the situation and provide direction as required. Um, as noted previously, that direction has been provided to the company and we continue to work with them collaboratively with the First Nation of Nacho Nike Dunn on the response. So as the situation grows and changes, it's a dynamic situation, we continue to work together to provide additional direction to accommodate those changes that are happening. Can I add to John? I think there is a lot of gravity to the situation. And I think we've always said that this is extremely serious and significant. We, if I think about 
what we've mobilized as a department, it's, it, it's huge. Uh, I, I, anyway, Deputy Minister is, has taken the lead on this and it's, it, it's a serious incident. I think there's a couple things that we need to please try and understand alongside of that. Sometimes we'll hear, oh, you need to get in there and do things right away, but just a reminder that it has to be safe, right? So there, we've got a slide up above and there's still risks with that slide. So not, there, there are some things we would like to be able to do right away or have the, the company do right away that you need to make sure is being done in a safe way. And I think that we agree that there is uh, risk around the groundwater. And that is why all this focus is there. It just has to be done where it can be done safely. Thank you for that. Julian, do you have a follow up? The other thing that I'm thinking of is, uh, you know, where the company is in all of this, how it's been responding to numerous orders that you've since provided in recent weeks. Uh, but if there are any discussions on your end about assuming control of the site, uh, just provided that uh, every minute matters. And uh, I have heard from some people who are on the ground who are working to monitor things and they're waiting for orders and to make some changes and really address what's happening as we speak right now. Uh, so it's, I think that the urgency is there I'm wondering if there are any conversations happening about YG assuming control of the site because things are moving too slowly. Lauren Haney, Deputy Minister. Thank you. I will, I will start by saying first, we agree the urgency is there. Um, I will also say it is very unfortunate and frankly unhelpful that the company has been so silent in general and specifically around the actions that they are taking at site. Um, through the information we've received and especially the technical workshop conversations we've had this week directly uh, with their technical experts, we've learned a lot more about what they are doing at site. So there, there is action being undertaken to protect the environment. They are diverting water, they're collecting it, they're doing a lot of work right now to try to treat it. That's, that's not to say it's, it's enough, but it's to say there is action being undertaken. And to be very clear, Yukon government is contemplating and is ready to step in and take action to complement or supplement what's already being on, done on site with that same view to ultimately health and safety and environmental protection. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Tim with the Yukon Star. Hold on, Tim. We got a mic for you. Yes, okay. Uh, my question relates to uh, water testing. You mentioned that you're testing for other metals and contaminants. Does that include arsenic? And what is the list of things that you're testing for? Maybe we could have Tyler field that question. Yes, so our, our monitoring does include uh, a, a wide range of total metals and dissolved metals. That includes arsenic. Those results, as I said, are being compared against aquatic health guidelines. And in the sampling results we've received to date, in the Yukon government samples, there's been no uh, exceedances of aquatic health guidelines for arsenic or any other uh, total metals uh, yeah, or, or of water quality objectives. There's been no exceedance of the aquatic health guidance or water quality objectives. Um, yeah, so our, our monitoring plan continues to sample a broad range of parameters, including uh, nitrogen species, cyanide, total salt, and, uh, and other contaminants that could be present. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. Tim, do you have a follow up? So, as we return to the uh, question, of the government being ready to step in in a complementary or uh, supportive fashion, at what point do you uh, think you might need to go in and take outright control? Is that a possibility? So I will say we are relying heavily right now on our technical experts. And again, that's the coordination between us and our technical team, 
First Nation of Nacho Knife done, and and now the company very directly. So we're relying on their advice to tell us when it is appropriate necessary to do so and i'm sure you can appreciate there's there's a lot of complexities there with the company still being on site and again to the extent we can we must complement what the company is is already doing and supplement where necessary um we of course are contemplating the possibility we are looking at all the scenarios right now and one of those scenarios is where we would be taking over um activities at the site in a more complete way. Okay, thank you for that. Next up is Macklin with CKRW. Thanks. My question has to do with uh, water testing, uh, or water treatment rather. Uh, so I understand that there hasn't been any treatment of water at the site yet. Could the Yukon government not have stepped in to help make that, I guess, happen quicker? It's been over three weeks now. Sure. Um, there has been water treatment happening at the site. So the company has started uh, cyanide destruction water treatment at the site, and uh, they have a, a very capable um, and well experienced company, uh, Lincoln Engineering, on the site as well that they've retained um, to help them with their water treatment. So they are actively looking at how they can modify the system they have and add to that system right now. So there is some treatment happening and they are doing everything they can right now to get further treatment going. Macklin, do you have a follow-up? So then what or when, I guess, does the uh, current water treatment facility upgrades, when does that actually take effect and when can they start using that? Do you have an update on it? I don't have, no, we, I have expect this happening within the next few weeks um, and again that's part of the the idea of the company uh, recirculating water onto the heat for the 10 to 15 day period is is aligned with what they when they expect that water treatment to be commissioned thank you next up we have jim with the uh, yukon news uh, thank you um, my question is with regards to last week's uh, inspector directions the ones uh, dealing with the expanded water storage um you know given that we're now talking about recirculating contaminated water onto the heap i think it's I, my assumption is that the company missed that uh, july 15th target for expanded uh, water storage um how far did they miss that mark by and why um and are they on pace for the the deadline at the end of the month seven with cmi yes good morning so the inspector's direction that was issued on July 10th uh, listed a number of actions that had to happen, uh, one of which, one part of which uh, was related to increasing storage capacity uh, with a deadline of early, earlier this week. Uh, our officers are on site this week right now. Um, they're due to be back uh, later this afternoon, so I'll have more information as to how far or how much progress or, or what progress was made by the company in, in that regard. Um, there is still a portion of that direction that requires additional storage capacity to be completed before the end of the month. I think uh, July 29th was the deadline. Um, so uh, there's, there's still more to, to determine before we can make a decision on, on whether they've complied fully with the direction or whether there's other actions that have to happen. Thank you. Jim? I, I mean, there was a specific target to be met by July 15th. Uh, in, in the direction in terms of cubic meters excavated was that was not met and that's is that the reason that we're now talking about pumping uh, pumping water back onto the heat uh, no the decision to pump heat uh, water back onto the heat was made by Victoria Gold on their own and that I believe commenced on Saturday so that was a completely different initiative undertaken by the company uh, and had nothing to do with the direction itself the direction was just for additional stores to be created um, and uh, in particular for Monday was a, a specific size pond 50,000 cubes and like I said the officers are on, on site this week we expect them back to report back on what they found this week uh, later today. I, I wonder Kelly is there anything to add just in terms of how this is a, 
a quickly evolving situation and these change are, these plans are evolving. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, further to my notes earlier about the situation, you know, rapidly evolving, the direction, we've been working very closely, of course, uh, CMI and, and us on the regulatory side to um, work with the company, our technical experts and the First Nation of Nationalite Dunn's technical experts to help inform these directions to the company. Uh, ever, you know, even since the July 10th um, direction, we have learned so much more about the site, especially this week, having the company and their technical experts at the table with us. Um, so given that, you know, there are possibilities and, and we're looking at working through opportunities right now to potentially even look at what the directions we provided to date, what's still outstanding from the company and be able to provide more information to the company and further direction that can uh, work with the information that we've gathered this week in understanding what's going on at site, understanding as a deputy minister was mentioning, um, understanding their uh, timelines and their ability to treat water coming up. Um, the situation is in flux. I can't really understate that. Um, and so we are able to take the new information that we get and update directions as required. Thank you for that, Kelly. Next up is Stuart with Shown FM. So with respect to um, <clears throat> uh, the umbrella final agreement and water rights being um, incredibly important to the First Nations, um, 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 you, you said that uh, that you've got some clarification from the First Nation of Notre Naik done in terms of what they were asking for two weeks ago, um, and some other things that you have to look into. What, what's the timeline on um, how? Well, sorry, what's the timeline on coming to uh, an agreement with the First Nation of Notre Naik done in terms of uh, stopping mining activity on their traditional territory? Mr. Stryker. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Look, we're trying to respond as quickly as we can. So the first thing I want to note is that we, we believe the two priorities are most important are around safety and the environment. Okay. Some of these things are, are for other areas, right? Like, uh, for example, some of it's around exploration. We don't have water impoundment or heap leaches in those other places. So, so it's, it's a very different set of circumstances in whether you're exploration or even the other active quartz mine that's in Nachanaik Dunn's traditional territory. But we, we of course want to respond quickly. And so I, I, I just know that we, like, we'll, we'll be working on it. I, I've got meetings set up internally this weekend to to work through to to try and get to a response uh, to uh, the First Nation of Nacho Night Done. I don't have a timeline in front of me. We're we're working hard uh, to uh, to consider it appropriately and well to 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 respond like a government to a government. Thank you, Minister. Stuart, do you have a follow up? Uh, what, one of the other things that you mentioned uh, was that you're going to be using uh, current mineral legislation as part of the decision-making process with that. Um, this, this is more for my notes than anything else. Uh, do we have a timeline on new mi uh, mineral legislation? Is this, oh, hi. Yeah, the uh, new minerals legislation was agreed upon under the devolution transfer agreement. We have been working uh, uh, very diligently recently, and, and not just us, but First Nations. We've been, I think we've been meeting two days every two weeks to work on that new minerals legislation. Uh, it, let me say this, everybody is under pressure right now, so you know, the, some of the same folks that would be working on new minerals legislation are also working on a response to to the heap leach failure. So people are pulled pretty far on stuff. Um, I, I would say that that 
that there has been progress which has been made on the uh, on the new minerals legislation, but we're always uh, working to try and get it moving as quickly as possible because all of us agree that we need new minerals legislation. All right, uh, the thing that we've been working on lately is the, a legislative framework and mapping out the core of that new legislation. But for for everybody listening out there, that is important, but it it won't. Right now, we must address this emergency situation. That is what we need to do right now. And uh, new minerals legislation, you know, will help uh, in future. Thank you, Minister. We're going to turn to some uh, questions online now. I'll note that we'll be looping back later on with Sarah with Radio Canada. Um, Blair with the Northern Miner. We, we could unmute him, let him ask a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so why did Victoria Gold um, have to move workers off site temporarily while it works on the cleanup effort? And by that, I mean, um, they're not sleeping in the camp under this temporary measure. They're sleeping in a, those essential workers are sleeping in a camp outside the main camp. Why is that? Yeah, uh, Kelly Constable. Thank you. Um, as part of the response and part of the directions given to the company, they were required to provide us with a geotechnical stability plan. They did provide that to us. Um, as the response has evolved over recent days with the irrigation of the heap, we require updated information on geotechnical stability. So out of an abundance of caution, we worked with the company and with WCB to ensure that the camp is no longer being used. That's right on site there. And folks have been moved. They are staying overnight in a camp that is further away from the current uh, operational part of the, the mine, but still you know, close to site, able to do their daily work. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Blair, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yes. So what it was it was done. This move was made out of out of an abundance of caution. What potential um, dangers um, were taken into account um, uh, when the decision was made to move them into the temporary camp? So given the fact that the heap is being irrigated temporarily to create additional water storage on site. The an original geotechnical stability information that we have requires updating. So because the information is not available right now, out of an abundance of caution, not knowing what could happen, that is why workers were moved. The company made the decision to move the workers. Thank you, Kelly. Did you have further notes? Sure, I just wanna clarify. Um, so the existing camp is located within the the path of the slide area um, and to note that this was an action that the company proactively took we agree with it uh, but this we didn't have to issue an order to make the company do this uh, they did it they did it themselves and along with an emergency response plan and an evacuation plan thank you uh, next up we have daryl greer with the canadian press Hello, this uh, question is perhaps for the minister, the deputy minister. Um, the uh, regulatory concerns and the other concerns that were uh, raised in the past of this mine, including uh, EMR uh, ordering this uh, management review, uh, identified uh, reportable cyanide spills, inadequate storage, uh, and heap leaching being kind of new to the territory back in 22, 2022. Um, now that you've had some time to perhaps uh, reach back and see the kind of concerns that were about this mine, how preventable and foreseeable was this event in your minds? What will be critical is is a comprehensive investigation or review to understand the, the cause. There will, there, I'm sure there will be many causes and, and what happened. Um, so we have committed to doing that. We're working with the First Nation of Nacho Naigdan uh, to set that up. It'll be an expert panel and we've already had 
some contact with world-class experts who are interested in, in being on that panel. And this is similar to what's done with any mine failure in the world. Um, this type of independent review panel is struck to ultimately get at the heart of what happened. And absolutely, it's with a view to lessons learned and implementing that in our, in our legislation as, as well as our enforcement regulatory practice. Thank you, Lauren. Daryl, do you have a follow-up? Um, that unfortunately didn't really answer my question, but uh, my next question is about the uh, royalty, the royalties from this mine. There's three years that are indicated that they're under review. Um, is there any indication when the royalty rates from this mine uh, will will no longer be under review? And has this incident uh, perhaps uh, affected that review process of the royalty rates? Because there's zero dollars being listed online right now. Kelly. Thank you. Um, yes, the royalties are under review. Uh, that work is actually complete currently. Uh, we are just holding off for the moment while we respond to this event. This event does take precedent over um, reviewing the royalties. Uh, we have collected royalties, to be clear. We do collect royalties every year. Um, and, then a, and then an evaluation of those royalties happens and then um, a recalibration if required happens later. So royalties have been collected. Um, the final review just has not been released to the public. We are working with the company on that. Thank you, Kelly. Next up, we have Niall McGee with the Globe and Mail. Niall, we can't hear you right now. Okay. Uh, we joke, we you got you now. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we do. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think this, this question is for Kelly. Um, rega regarding the storage of the water and the treatment of the contaminated, contaminated water. So as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a, a question mark here over whether the company will actually be able to uh, establish uh, enough storage for the water. I know you mentioned what they're doing. It sounds like it's not clear whether they'll succeed. Can, can, you, can you break down um, what, it, what it will mean if, if, um, if, if the company cannot uh, find a, enough storage? Uh, and, and can you also just get into, I think you said they're not able to treat the um, uh, contaminated water currently. And it sounds like that's a permanent kind of problem. Can you also just get into that? Like, what are the implications of that long term? Um, if, you, if you could just address both of those, thanks very much. Thank you. I will note, um, again, it's a very dynamic situation. I cannot speak to the long term aspect, as you note there, but I can speak to what's happening on site right now. Um, the company does have water treatment capacity and they are treating water. The water treatment capacity, however, does not treat all of the contaminants that are of concern. So the company is required to treat water to a certain standard in their water license before discharging it to the environment. They have not been able to meet that those requirements to discharge to the environment. As soon as they can discharge to the environment, of course, the storage um, issue does become less of an issue. In the meantime, while the company is busy working, responding to our inspector's direction of July 10th, they have made the decision to create more storage by recirculating water onto the heap. As I note, uh, we've been working with the company and the First Nation of Nacho Nayak Dunn, technical experts all um, working together this week, which has been an excellent development in that regard. And with those heads together, we are currently revising plans and coming up with additional actions that can be taken um, to respond to this dynamic uh, situation. Thank you, Kelly. Now, do you have a follow up? Uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, I guess I'll just follow up on that one because I, I, I don't think I, I still don't think I fully understand it. So, so the issue sounds like that it's, it's, um, they, they, they have treatment capacity, but, but they're not able to get rid of all the contam contaminants they, they need to. 
um, for for some of the for some of the contaminated water. So that, that sounds like that's what's causing the backlog. So is is um, how do how do how do you get around that um, that their inability to get rid of some of the contaminants? Is is it they just don't have the technological abilities, or like like how do they get around that, or does it or does this problem just perpetuate itself? Um, sure. I'll I'll jump in. Um, it, we are certainly not saying that this water cannot be treated. That's that's not the case. Um, water treatment often happens in a staged process. And for right now, the company is undertaking cyanide treatment. That's the focus of it. They have a, a water treatment plant uh, that is designed to, to treat to their effluent quality standards in their water license. Um, it wasn't contemplated that the contamination levels would be as high as they are. So they need to look at refining what they already have and potentially bringing in uh, other supplementary systems to support it. So the, the key here with the, the limited available storage is twofold. Ultimately, it's making sure there's water treatment capability. If you can treat water, you can get it off the site safely and you don't, you don't have the water storage capacity issue uh, to worry about to the same extent. And the second piece of it is also in parallel ensuring there is more water storage capacity on site so that that is the other piece of it that we understand the the company is working on as as seven mentioned we'll hear back from our inspectors um, probably later today tomorrow to understand what's happening on the ground uh, and we will continue as i said monitoring the situation and determining when and how whether we need to step in and support that effort as well. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, we'll now go back to the room and we have some questions from Sarah with Radio Canada. Thank you. Do you have a preference if I ask a question in English or in French? If you, if you, if you do both, that would be great for me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be bilingual questions. Um, just give me a sec. So I just want to understand a bit more when it was um, the idea of stepping in as the government, uh, what would that look like exactly? What are we talking about here? Okay. Do you want me to repeat that in French? En français, oui. Oui, okay, parfait. Um, quand vous parliez, par exemple, que le gouvernement uh, prenne le contrôle de ce qui se passe à la mine, à quoi exactement on fait allusion? À, qu -ce que ça, à quoi ça ressemblerait? C'est un range. La réponse dépend de, de la situation chaque moment. Alors, pour nous, nous préparons pour toutes les possibilités, mais on travaille premièrement avec la compagnie parce qu'ils sont là, ou il est là, et, et il a les expertises et les, les équipements, et les choses comme ça, c'est alors ça c'est ça, ça c'est plus vite que si le gouvernement commence. Mais il faut qu'on prépare. Oh, right. Sorry, I never get the, that tense right. <laughs> um, et 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 peut-être comme le, le député a dit. C'est une opportunité pour, pour augmenter qu'est-ce qui, qu qui se passe sur le mine ou si ça, 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 ça ce n'est pas suffisant, euh, on, peut, on peut remplacer le, 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 le travail de, 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 de la mine. Mais ça dépend de, de qu'est-ce qui se passe avec leur réponse tout le temps. Sarah, do you have a follow-up? Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, because we also talked about the stability of the landslide and now water storage, how at risk are we to a second catastrophe? Oui, oui, enfin, okay. oui, oui. Um, donc, on a parlé de la stabilité de la pente avec le glissement de terrain. 
Puis on a parlé aussi du... Euh, what storage? Euh, <rire> le barrage, barrage. Ouais, de je, le voyons. Ok. I, well, storage of the water. Ouais. Um, les, les bassins de rétention, c'est ça okay. là. <rire> oui, c'est. Fait que bassins de rétention de l'eau qui sont à pleine capacité. Mm-hmm. À quel point on est à risque d'une deuxième catastrophe ici Oui. Notre officiel, notre notre expert technical donne leur, euh, leur avis à nous. Qu'est-ce que c'est le risque? Et ce n'est pas simple parce qu'on ne peut pas euh, traverser le, le, on dit, le slide parce que ce n'est pas sauf. Alors, c'est une question difficile. Qu'est-ce que c'est le risque? C'est un peu inconnu à ce moment. Alors, il faut c'est nécessaire qu'on on, on place les autres euh, euh, conditions ou préparations, par exemple pour, pour le, le, le camp, 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 on ne reste pas sur la nuit parce que le, le risque c'est trop. Alors, et, et, et ça c'est une complication pour tous les autres. Euh, 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 effort pour la le, le, le situation, situation avec le, le l'eau sous-sol et le, 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 l'environnement. Alors, il, comme Kelly a dit, il faut qu'on on continue à regarder toutes les, les, les euh, décisions dans dans toute tout la situation de, de risque. Et on continue avec nos experts, qu'est-ce que c'est le risque? Et ça peut changer avec la pluie ou avec les autres choses, ça peut changer chaque fois. OK. That's it for time, everybody. We appreciate your, your interest and we will be continuing to provide regular updates.